Hello and welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So when I first saw the rumors of Nvidia's new GPU codenamed Lovelace, my first reaction was a little bit like Steve Carroll from The Office. Oh my no God! No God! Please no! 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 So you're probably thinking that's a pretty negative reaction for a tech enthusiast and you're probably right um, but I've been trying to get the 30 series GPU since launch so for the last three months and I haven't been able to get one yet so to have this news drop is kind of like you're trying to buy the old iPhone or the current iPhone and then news of a newer iPhone drops so you're wondering whether you should get the uh, current one or whether you should wait for the future one. So that's the title of this video today and um, should you wait for Lovelace or should you go and buy Ampere? But I think to answer that question, you really need to answer more questions. So uh, we're going to look at what is the actual performance of Lovelace and when is it going to be available and will there be any super refreshers midway through the generation? And uh, I got to say that this is a speculation video so uh, most of these answers will be based off of well-reasoned arguments but uh, there's nothing concrete out there right now so what we're really going off is just one tweet from copi 7 kimmy and uh, we're going to speculate around that uh, information okay but hopefully I think um, by answering some of those questions uh, we will be able to I guess uh, be more comfortable with our current GPU or be more comfortable about buying the new Ampere GPU. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Okay, so Video Cars has an article about Lovelace and I think this was a day or two ago, but it says here that uh, from the second paragraph, the architecture code name Lovelace would see an increase in graphics processing clusters up to 12, which is twice as many as Turing's GA102 GPU has. This is according to the new tweet from a well-known and proven leaker copy 7 Kimmy. This means that the GPU could hold as many as 72 texture processor clusters texture processor clusters and 144 streaming multiprocessors. With 144 SMs, the GPU could see as many as 18,432 CUDA cores, which is 71% more than GA102 GPU. This is actually cop by 7 Kimmy's tweet, which is that GA102 has a 7x6 structure. Maybe ADO102 will get a 12x6 structure. Um, and just before we get into the architecture, um, this is from video cards and obviously they're saying that it's unclear when this new architecture will be released. So we'll be speculating a little bit on when that might actually happen. Um, but again, they warn that uh, this might not actually happen because there have been many times in the past that um, products have been scrubbed off roadmaps. So uh, it's possible this may never come out. Now, it also says that um, NVIDIA Lovelace AD102 GPU may arrive under GeForce RTX 40 series, possibly after RTX 30 Super Refresh. And so Video Cards is still speculating that the Super Refresh is going to come still. And um, as we all know, NVIDIA is now expected to re refresh its lineup only three months after release with RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3070 Ti graphics cards next quarter. Now, this is video cards table for uh, the Ampere and Lovelace comparison. So as you can see here, Ampere has seven GPCs versus Lovelace's 12. And that ultimately means that we're going to get 144 streaming multiprocessors and 18,432 CUDA cores. And they basically work the um, floating point 32 performance um, backwards from the Ampere one. So uh, we don't know the arch yet. We don't know what uh, frequency it's going to be running at, but they've kind of speculated that if it's the same as Ampere, then it's going to do 66 teraflops. Uh, and you can also see there the fabrication process. Um, they've said that it's going to be five nanometer Samsung. Now it didn't say that in Cop i7 Kimmy's tweet, but we'll get to why Video Cars has speculated that it's going to be 5 nanometer. Essentially, uh, the only way that they can get 
this amount of performance or uh, this architecture is that uh, they do a node shrink. So that is really the only way that they can uh, go from 7 GPCs to 12 GPCs because right now with Ampere it's already a 600 millimeter uh, die and uh, if they were to fit that on the 8 nanometer Samsung, well, uh, it would just be inefficient and uh, it wouldn't work. So uh, the only way for them to do that would be on 5 nanometer Samsung or possibly 7 nanometer Samsung. Um, but they speculated that's going to be 5 nanometer. So if we take a look at uh, the architecture of Ampere, as you can see here, there's 7 GPCs. There's 12 SM units for each GPC. And each SM unit has 128 CUDA core units inside. So essentially, um, that, that really is how they get... Uh, all of these numbers. Now this is Samsung's roadmap for uh, their process nodes and as you can see here for Ampere, um, Ampere was on an 8 nanometer process so I'm not 100% sure if it was on LPP or LPU because uh, Nvidia stated that it was on a custom 8 nanometer process but essentially that is really on the 10 nanometer process and what you're getting with 5 nanometer would be a node jump to um, the 7 nanometer family of uh, processes. So we take a look at this chart which shows the transistor densities comparison. You can see here that the 10 nanometer for Samsung is pretty similar to the 8 nanometer from Samsung. But uh, when you move to 7 nanometer, might possibly be 5 nanometer for Lovelace, um, you're getting a big jump in terms of the transistor densities. So that is why they are able to fit uh, 12 GPCs in possibly the same die space as a um, Ampere a GA102. This article is from 2018 and it says that Samsung Electronics starts production of EUV based 7 nanometer LPP process. Now what I want to point out is that it says here Samsung's new 7 LPP allows up to 40% increase in area efficiency with 20% higher performance or 50% lower power consumption resulting in better yields with significantly fewer layers. So this article is from uh, last month. And it says here, Samsung's 5 nanometer LPE node in production with 20% power efficiency set in tow. So if we were going to take this information as legitimate, I think we can work backwards to see what the SKUs might be or what the GPUs might be for a 40 series lineup of cards. So if uh, we're going to get 70% performance improvement, that would be the top die, which would be the RTX 4090. And then uh, what we've seen in the past with a 70 series card is that it slightly beats or matches the old uh, Titan class or uh, 80 Ti or 90 series card. So I think what we're going to get with the RTX 4070 is that it's going to be around 100 or 110 percent performance difference uh, to the RTX 3090. And then I think the RTX 4080 will probably split the difference between those two and that also gives them room later on for a RTX 4080 Ti or an RTX 4070 Ti. Now in terms of memory, I would say that um, they're probably still going to stick with 384 bits for the top die. I don't think they're going to go to 512 bit. So if they went to 512 bit, I think that would stretch things a little bit too far with their current Ampere cards versus their uh, Lovelace cards. So I think they'll probably stick with 384 bits. Uh, but the thing is that uh, everybody knows that there's just not enough VRAM. So I think they're going to bump up the VRAM on all of their cards for next generation. So I don't think they want to deal with the whole VRAM issue or the VRAM discussion anymore. I think they will probably want to go up to uh, 20 gigabytes at least for that RTX 4070. And then to differentiate it a little bit, I think they're going to go to 22 gigabytes for the 4080. Now, technically, you know, people could say that, well, the 4070, it could be like a 6900 XT situation where you could get uh, 480 gigabytes per second for the uh, memory bandwidth. And I don't know if NVIDIA really wants to do that because I think that would actually uh, hold this card back. And actually, I think that would make development a little bit trickier as well if they don't provide that memory bandwidth on those 40 series cards. So I think with the RX 6900 XT, 
with the 480 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, it's already falling a little bit behind in terms of 4K performance to the 3080 and the 3090. So I don't think Nvidia really want to go down that route, especially when they don't have Infinity Cache. So I think they're going to bump up the 4070 to 760 gigabytes per second. Now that's with G6X, so they could very well go with G6 again, and then the memory bandwidth will be a little bit less than that. But um, I've just assumed G6X for now. I think it's going to have 20 gigabytes of VRAM, and then the 4080 will be 22, and then the 4090 will be 24. I think that makes a pretty neat product stack. So let's take a look at the, I guess, assumed performance for uh, these new cards. And so this is Cyberpunk 2077, and I've drawn in the performance of these new cards in, and of course, it's not possible for me to say that it's going to scale perfectly to 71% performance difference, but I think uh, if it were to, then this is the likely performance that you get. And so this is a, just a bit of a visualization on what you might be getting. So with the 4090, you're going to get 81 FPS at 4K Ultra. And then 4080, you're going to get a 4K 65 FPS experience in Cyberpunk 2077. And then with the 4070, you're looking at around similar performance to that RTX 3090, uh, but maybe a little bit better. Now, in terms of the ray tracing, it's really hard to say what the ray tracing is going to be like without the architecture information. So I don't want to speculate down that path too much, except to say that it probably will scale accordingly. So if you're going to get 70% uh, more CUDA cores, then you're going to get 70% more ray tracing. Now, it could very well be that the ray tracing performance, again, is improved, so you get more ray tracing performance. So it might be like a 2x or 3x like we saw with Ampere. But um, I think ray tracing is still going to be a tough nut to crack next generation. And as you can see here with the RTX 3090 performance uh, in Cyberpunk for ray tracing, if you turn DLSS off, you're only getting 22 frames per second. So I wouldn't get your hopes up for 4K60 ray tracing for the 4080 or 4090 series of cards. So the other question is, well, when is Lovelace going to be available? And I have two points that I want to make here. And so the first one is that um, when we look at the architectural announcements or when they've actually announced the new GPU on a new architecture, uh, they've roughly been every two years. So um, I don't see why NVIDIA would want to change that uh, when they're ahead of AMD. So I think uh, they'll probably stick to that schedule. Technically, they could bring out a GPU in 18 months but I think they would be rushing things if they did that. And uh, they've never brought out a new GPU within a year, at least not uh, that I'm aware of. So they might have done it very early on in their life cycle, but uh, not of late anyway. So I think they're happy with this two year gap for their GPUs, and that gives them a full two years to go and sell their GPUs. If they were to release Lovelace within 18 months, well, they're kind of losing out on six months worth of sales for Ampere, so I don't think they're gonna do that. So the other thing to note is that it also depends on AMD as well, because if AMD suddenly start to sell better in 2021, then Nvidia may think about bringing their new uh, Lovelace GPUs out earlier than expected, so that could also play a part as well. Um, but if you look at the current situation, I think Nvidia is probably more than happy uh, with the current situation right now because AMD don't have very many GPUs. It doesn't look like they're really that invested or that uh, they want to be that involved in getting um, GPUs out there. They certainly do from a marketing standpoint, but it just doesn't seem like it from the number of GPUs that are out there that, and that they're also selling. So I think uh, Nvidia is more than happy with the current situation. And if it keeps on going the same uh, in 2021, we're probably not going to see Lovelace in 2021. And I would say that it's most likely that we'll see it in 2022. So this next table might be a little bit more contentious because um, maybe people are thinking, well, you don't have enough information to tell people whether they should be waiting for Lovelace or buying Ampere. And I would say that um, these are kind of just my thoughts on what I think uh, these cards are going to perform like. So I think 
everybody should make their own judgment, of course, on uh, how their GPU is performing for them. So if you're very happy with your GPU, I would say, you know, don't worry about upgrading. But if you feel like, you know, even your 2080 is not giving you enough performance, then for sure, go ahead and upgrade. So only you yourself really know uh, when you should be upgrading. But um, this, these are just my thoughts on, I guess, based on looking at different reviews, different benchmarks across uh, different games. And these are really just triple A games that I'm looking at. But I really feel like um, if we look at the first column for 4K60, I think uh, really if you're on a 2080, you should be more than okay for this next couple of years. And you can probably wait for Lovelace. Um, but if you are on a card lesser than that, then I think maybe that's probably not going to meet your expectations uh, in AAA games. Um, so I think you could think about getting an Ampere. So for example, the RTX 2070, maybe you could think about getting an RTX 3080 uh, if you really want 4K 60. And then I guess for 1440p, uh, 60 frames per second, I think a RTX 2060 Super would probably be enough for this generation. And then if you were looking at the other cards, or if you have one of the other cards, then I would say that you'd probably want to consider upgrading to Ampere, and you probably wouldn't be able to hold out for the next couple of years until Lovelace comes along. And I think with 1080p, 60, most of these cards should be okay. So will there be any supercars? Well, I would say that yes, there probably will be, but it'll be one of two things. And it will be either one, uh, they'll say give you a 3080, but relabel it as a 3070 super. And they might do that because um, these Ampere cars aren't selling well enough. So they need to do a refresh with improved performance. So they might do it that way. But technically it's just basically like a price drop. Or if they're selling well, then what they will do is they might just give you a minor spec bump uh, of three or four percent performance difference and then label it a 3080 Super. And they would do that just so that they could, I guess, uh, get these cards out again and refresh the entire lineup and get reviewers to review it and call it the best GPU yet. Um, and you know, people who are just going to walk into a computer shop, they might be thinking, well, I just want the latest and greatest and they'll just be given a super card, even though it's only like three or 4% better. So that's probably what the super refresh is aimed to do. I think all these supercars are basically out there already, but they're just called TI cars this time. And, you know, take your pick from uh, all of the different cars out there at all of the different price ranges. And if you're not happy, well, then you really have to wait for, I guess, a price drop. Okay, so that about does it for this one. So if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.